Welcome back. You're either a commercial realtor or you're a developer, and you're looking to specialize in a specific type of property like medical office or self-storage warehouses or hotels, but you're having trouble finding them. Welcome to Real Estate's Next Level. I'm Lauren Kime with Lehigh University's Goodman Center for Real Estate. And today we're going to use a tool called Reonomy to help us easily locate properties that fit our specialization and find all the data we can about them, including what LLC owns the property, who the principals are for that LLC, maybe some contact information, perhaps what they might owe on the property, and a lot more. So what is Reonomy, and how will that help us to identify likely property sellers? Before I get into that, if you can do me a favor, please subscribe to our channel and hit that little notification bell to let you know when we post a new video. Reonomy is a research and analytics platform for real estate professionals. They aggregate data from hundreds of public sources and then overlay it with their own algorithms. And why is that important? Well, because we're in a world of off-market properties being the hottest commodity in many cases. In many areas around the country, the multifamily market is still quite hot, and those multifamily deals that are over 50 units sell before they ever hit the market. And the most successful realtors and investors are reaching out to those owners directly, bringing the bids without those properties ever being listed on the open market. Warehousing and distribution are also hot at the moment, so finding those property owners who might consider selling a warehouse or possibly doing a sale lease back in order to cash out of the building but keep their business running are in high demand. Our goal is not just to identify properties that are likely to sell, but also to track down the real owners of those properties so we can reach out to them. One of the great features of the Reonomy platform, although there are a few competitors who do this also, is to provide not just the LLC that owns any particular property, but also match it up and provide the likely principals that own or are partners in that LLC or partnership and any contact information, including phone numbers or email addresses, uh, possible for those real property owners. By the way, before I deep dive into this software, I want to remind you that you cannot make unsolicited calls to those who are on the do not call list. So be aware that you're going to have to scrub any phone numbers that you find. Reonomy can be used for due diligence research on a specific property, or it can be used to build a database of potential prospects. It helps us to find the hidden opportunities in the market. For example, if I'm trying to locate contact information on a specific property, perhaps an expired listing, or maybe a great corner lot that one of my clients might be interested in, I'll plug in the address of the property. Now today, I'm gonna to use primarily buildings that I own or properties that I have recently sold, so I don't publicly display information that violates the platform's rules. I'm also gonna to have to fuzzy out some of the searches so I don't run into legal issues later. So let's start with an individual property. Let's say I'm trying to locate the contact information for a property that just expired with another broker. And in this case, I'm actually plugging in a property that I sold myself. Uh, this was a three unit strip mall. It gives you some information here on the left. I'm gonna open a full window of it. This was a three unit strip mall, like I said, uh, at one point in time, most recently a single tenant took all three spots. This aerial, you can see the corner lot, this aerial allows me to rotate it so I can see that from different angles, which is kind of nice. I can also click on the street version, which shows me the property here. And again, this property does not have to be something that is available for sale now. It can be any commercial property anywhere in the country, and it's got information. Let me go back to the aerial. One other thing I can do, which is nice, is I can open this up, and I can show the entire area around it. Here's the highway interchange, and get a look at what is around that property. On the right, you're going to see all the tax parcels, and these tax parcels are clickable, meaning that I can click on one and open up that page as well and get all the information on that. I want to stick with this one for a minute. Just below the photo are a number of tabs. And these tabs give you a lot of information about the property. Some of it you can get from tax records. Some of it is a little beyond. 
So on the first tab, you'll notice uh, building a lot. It shows it's a retail property built in 1955 shows the uh, front footage. It shows the building area, 3,866 square feet. It even shows some information about the MSA that it's located in. Second tab shows the property owner. Now, actually we just settled on this. So he doesn't own it anymore, but Beck Real Estate Group was the owner. It's one of my clients. If we were to scroll down, and I don't wanna give out all of his information on this uh, video, the platform scrubs the LLC databases and finds the likely owners of this particular LLC and their contact information, including in many cases, their mobile phone number and their email address. One of the other interesting things about the software is you can actually click on the LLC. It'll open up a separate window and show you any other properties that might be owned by this particular LLC. In this case, this is the only property that this particular LLC actually owns. There are also tabs for who the tenants in the building are see the uh, construction company and so on. There are sales information uh, here, which would tell you when it sold and how much it sold for. There's a tab that shows you the debt on the property, how much they owe and who they owe it to. There's tax information, of course. Actually, I'm in the wrong spot here. There's tax information, of course. It gives you what the taxes are on the property. And then there's this convenient notes tab where you can put notes on the property for yourself that you can come back to later. Now, this is only open to you. This isn't something that goes out to the general public that are looking at this same database. If I pull up a second property, I'm gonna pull up uh, one that I own, Parkway Boulevard. You can see again, the building information, uh, 5,762 square feet. Uh, you'll see the owner information. And again, you can click on it. It'll show you everything that I own in this particular MSA. Uh, it gives you some contact information. It is not all correct, but it gives you some contact information. Uh, tenants in the building and so forth, debt, taxes, and notes. And again, over here, we can actually pull up other properties that are around it. Here's an insurance agency nearby, or I can pull up that information if I'd like to. Uh, I can pull up a... Uh, another insurance company next to it that owns a fairly large building there and who the tenants in that building are and so on. And while all this information is perhaps a time saver in trying to find out who the actual owner of a property is, what their contact information is, what you really want to know is how is this going to help you to build a prospect uh, list? So let's start there. I'm going to come up to the top and I'm going to try and put in an MSA. We're going to do a full search i we'll pull up the MSA for the Lehigh Valley area surrounding Allentown and Bethlehem. You'll see it's a fairly large area. There are 82,688 commercial property results showing up in that region. And let's start applying some filters. I can use the common filters like property type, size, or recommended, but I'd rather go to more filters and see all the different filters I can apply. For example, if I want to uh, prospect only hospitality properties, hotels, I find that there are 144 of them in this region. I can click apply and I'll be able to see where each one is located and pull up all the information on each if I'd like to. I'm gonna cancel that filter and go back to more filters again. And perhaps you wanna uh, search self-storage facilities. There are 51 of those. Changes the results up here to 51. Perhaps you want to uh, search multifamily. Now these are all the different commercial types here. Commercial general, uh, office, financial buildings, medical buildings, general office, hospitality properties, retail. We can just look for automotive repair shops, automotive sales, bars, nightclubs, car washes. There's 71 of those. Uh, under industrial, there's quite a few. But let's say we wanna search multifamily as an example. We find that there are 14,445 multifamily properties in this MSA. Now, I don't really want to go after 14,000 different property owners. It would take me forever. I want to limit that. So up here under property type, there's also building a lot, owners, tenants, sales, and so on. I'm going to go to building a lot. And one of the things I can plug in is number of units. So I'm going to go to 50 plus, And that limits me back down to 238 results. So if I apply that, it shows me where all of them are. It again shows the owners of those properties and we can pull them up. Let's go back one more time and go back to filters. And this time, 
let's say we're looking for uh, someone who wants to build an industrial warehouse or buy an industrial warehouse. That's the next tab. Uh, the building tab allows us to search. Well, let's first pick up anything that's industrial and let's go to the building and lot tab. That allows us to search anything by the age of the building, the zoning, the lot size, the building size, and so on. We can even search by a specific owner of the property if we'd like to. That's up here. We can search by the tenants and where they're located and by any sales date. So why is all of this important? Well, commercial property owners take out loans that are fixed for five years. It's not uncommon to sell between years five and seven. So let's say we've got buyers interested in buying any industrial buildings that are over 40,000 square feet in this MSA that are likely to sell. So under property type, we've already selected industrial. We've selected the 2,588 properties in the area. Under building a lot, we might want to go to a building area of 40,000 square feet plus. And then under sales, we might want to go back and try and figure out when they actually bought the property. Let's put in a custom tab here. And let's go back to, now we're doing this in 2020. So let's go back to 2012 to 2015, November of both, and search that. That brings us down to 81 properties that are warehouse space or industrial space in this MSA that are over 40,000 square feet that actually were purchased between November of 2012 and November of 2015. And again, this might be a database that we might want to try and track and might want to try and reach out to. Let's clear this again. We also may want to look up properties by debt. And again, uh, we can look up those who took out mortgages between uh, in the last five to seven years if we want to. Who took out a mortgage in the last year, last two to three years? We can put in a custom date range. Let's just go to the last five to seven years. There are 3,300 commercial property owners who borrowed money uh, between five and seven years ago. So those are properties that may be reaching maturity date within the next year. And actually, if we don't want to do that, there's even a maturity date tab here that lets us see who might be reaching a maturity date in the next 90 days or the next year. For example, again, if I want to go back and look at just hotels that uh, because of the pandemic may be in trouble and their mortgage origination was five to seven years ago, there were four of them or might have a maturity date within the next year. None of them are actually showing up that way. We can try and search those and reach out to them. And maybe they'd be interested in selling the property than, rather than refinancing it. One of the other really interesting features of this platform is you can also narrow it by lender. So again, let's clear all of this. Uh, we've got 82,688 results. I'm gonna go back to debt. And here I'm gonna put in a lender name. Let's say Wells Fargo. If I wanna figure out which of these properties has a loan on it from Wells Fargo. There are a little over a thousand loans in this region or commercial properties in this region that are financed by Wells Fargo. If I want to figure out if TD Bank has uh, loans on them, there are 224 of those and so on. We can also search properties that are distressed. This is a very powerful tab. We can look at properties that are in pre foreclosure, and there are 39 of them currently. Uh, we can look for uh, anyone that is in trouble and in the process of uh, going up for auction and reach out to those and see if we can help them. And once we build that list, we can label it. So let's go back and try and create a, a list again. Let's do self-storage facilities and let's just do all of them for the moment. So I found out where they are. I've got 51 of them listed. I can actually come up here and I can label them. I can create a label for those uh, self-storage facilities. I can label individual properties for ease of identifying them later. Or if I don't wanna do that, I might wanna export the entire list. I can export all the owner's contact information, the tenant information, their properties into an Excel file or a CSV file, and then import them into whatever contact relationship management software you might be using. And finally, if I decide not to do that, I can click on this button and Reonomy can build a physical mail campaign for you to target that audience that you select. And again, we're just really scratching the surface here, but I hope you get a feel for how powerful 
this platform is and some of the new tools that are available to try and prospect for commercial property owners. I really hope today's video was helpful for you. And again, if you liked the video, I'd appreciate it if you subscribe. Until next time, I'm Lauren Kime and thank you for watching.